Hi, this is Pete Taylor. The crowd on its feet. I've seen it all today. Cyclones are going to win their second Big 12 championship outright. It's hard to believe that on March 5th, it will have been 10 years since Iowa State lost a great ambassador and beloved friend in Pete Taylor. Over the next 10 days, I'll visit with Eric Hept, Pete's best friend and his partner on the Cyclone Radio Network. We'll look back at 10 memorable moments in Iowa State athletics history and the graceful way that only Pete could have described the impact of those moments. 10 great Pete Taylor calls in the days to come, but today, a look at what Pete meant to Iowa State fans. That's going to do it. Here comes the team. Here comes the fans. And there go the goalposts. Iowa State has upset Nebraska. Whenever I go around and talk to Cyclone fans anywhere, I mean, they have such fond memories of Pete, you know, and uh, he was he was the voice of Iowa State. And even though now, John, you and I, we have, we have many listeners, uh, there weren't nearly as many TV games back in those days, too. So he was maybe an even more important lifeline to, to a lot of our fans who couldn't come to the games or, or for road games. So he was one of a kind. You knew where you stood with Pete all the time. You knew how he felt, uh, but he was always accurate and he was fair. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that I think fans appreciate. They don't care if you want one team to win over another, especially if you're broadcasting for that team, but they want you to be fair. And I think Pete really was. Pete was fair and honest for sure, but you had no doubt which team he wanted to win. Two seconds, one second, Iowa State's on the way to the final 16 in the country. 72 to 69 over the fifth ranked Michigan Wolverines. Kind of like this season in basketball where you lost some really heartbreakers and then and it's like, we care. We care who wins, uh, definitely. As you said, we're invested in it. And, and you watch some friends of ours who are doing TV uh, for the Big 12 or Big 8 network, and, and they just leave. And it's like, you know, hey, oh, that was a great game. You know, and it's like, yeah, well, killing me. And say, how lucky are those guys? You know, and then, then you have a great win. You know, one, and they leave, and they don't really care one way or another, and we care, and that's why you know, people talk about the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, you know, and, and for me, and I know for Pete, uh, the thrill of victory was always much more rewarding than the pain of the agony of defeat. This one's over. Iowa State has won 17 to 14, and maybe the biggest game since the series was resumed in 1977. What a game. And since fans were sharing that same joy or agony, they felt like they really knew Pete, even if they never met him. You tend to listen more when you have a guy who's, who's talking on the radio that you, you know you can trust. And on some level, feel you know. And maybe some of it came from his years at TV8 as well, you know, when he was you know, on TV and they saw him there, they, they identified with his voice. Uh, but he was Iowa State. I mean, there's just no getting around it. He was, he was the front porch of the Iowa State Athletic Department. And I will say this, it was a front porch that was always very well kept. And that front porch included no catchphrases. He doesn't like things that are contrived, never liked them. You know, I don't like them either. It's just, you know, it's the, you know, the, the Dick Vitals, the Jim Romes. You know, and, and while they're fine, some people like that. Uh, you can't be that if it's not you. And that certainly wasn't Pete. You know, and the beauty of Pete was, he was better than those guys without any of those catchphrases because he came up with it on the spur of the moment. 42 seconds to Tinsley, drives up, good! He's fouled, the basket counts! Jamal Tinsley putting on a clinic. Oh, what a move by Marcus Pfizer! He drove in and absolutely tomahawked it over Chris Mill. Those things were never, were never scripted out and you know, he, he would scoff if anybody ever suggested that that had been the case. Now he's giving Brown, goes around to the 10, to the left side, to the 5, touchdown! Oh my goodness, what a run by Wallace! And if I might, I will say, I gotta be the luckiest guy. I've done this a long time, and I, I, the years I got to work with Pete, I cut my teeth with Pete. Uh, we had a blast traveling on the road, you know, and. After, after his death, you know, I got to work with you, John, and, and that has been, you know, I don't think anybody could be any luckier to draw the two straws that I've drawn in this business. 